Well, we're in day six of our disciples' fast, and this week we're working through Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 16, the first part of the Sermon on the Mount that includes the Beatitudes. Today, we just want to concentrate on that word blessed, because we use the word so casually and very often misuse the word so readily. I want to uh, challenge you to think about it from a biblical perspective. When God first blessed Adam and Eve, that's the first time we see the word blessed in Genesis chapter 1. And then in Revelation chapter 22, where the Bible says, blessed are those who wash their uh, robes and have the right to the tree of life. It gives us a better understanding that the word blessed really is more than happy. In other words, uh, some of the modern translations, when they interpret, when they translate uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 12, uh, they translate the word blessed as happy, but it's more to it than that. And it's more to it than our current cultural understanding that blessing means financial wealth or popularity or status or power or something like that. I want to challenge you to think that the word blessed from the biblical perspective has more to do with what God thinks of a situation than what we feel about the situation or what others say about the situation. When God blessed Adam, Adam and Eve, it spoke to the fact that he approved them, that from his perspective, they were exactly what he designed. And as a matter of fact, the scripture says everything he created was good. Matter of fact, it was very good. When we look at, for example, uh, Psalms 1, it talks about blessed is the man that does certain things. It's not really making reference to material possession is talking about this person is approved because of their character, because of their activity, their habitual, um, their habitual uh, reference to the word of God as opposed to worldly counsel. And so by the time we get to Matthew chapter 5 and Jesus says blessed, he says some things that sound startling to our ear because we've misused the word blessed. So he says blessed are the poor in spirit, or blessed are those who mourn, or blessed are those who are meek, or those who are uh, merciful, or those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. What he's literally talking about is this kingdom lifestyle, the lifestyle that he's calling his people to, is countercultural. It doesn't go along with what other people think blessed means. It makes reference to the fact that it's what God thinks about the situation but thinks about you, that's what really matters. And God says, blessed are those who are spiritually bankrupt, those who are not relying on their own resources in order to be right with God, those who mourn over the sinful condition of not only their own hearts, but the world in which we live, those who are meek, that is, who have passion but have it under control, and those who uh, hunger and thirst after righteousness, those who have an appetite for the things of God. Those types of people might not have status, popularity, or even material wealth in this system. However, from God's perspective, they are blessed, and that's, that means that they're more than happy. They are approved by God. So I want to challenge you as you think about your own circumstances, what you have or don't have, or what people say or don't say about you. Um, in the end, none of that really matters because we're living our lives in this world because we're moving to another world where we're looking for just two words to sum up our life, and that is well done. So I want you to be blessed, and that has nothing to do with how much money you have, has nothing to do with what people think about you, has everything to do with your relationship with God through Christ Jesus and ultimately God's evaluation of your character and your lifestyle. Be blessed and have a great day.